Okay, so you know that feeling right when you open your heating bill? Oh, yeah. And you're like, ooh. <laughs> like, is it just me or did it get like 10 degrees hotter in here? It's like you can feel the money just flying out the window. <laughs> right. And it's like suddenly you're daydreaming about like ditching it all. Yeah. And going off grid, you know. Even if it's just a fantasy. I think everyone has that thought at least once, especially these days. Oh, absolutely. Well, today on our deep dive, we're going deep into a world where folks have actually mastered that whole heating their homes thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Without relying on all the fancy tech that we usually think of, like we're talking the Amish. The Amish. That's fascinating. Right. We're going full witness on this one. But instead of Harrison Ford, right. we've got this awesome YouTube video from Frugal Solutions okay. called How Amish Heat Their Homes Without Gas Electricity. Mm -hmm. I mean, can we actually learn a thing or two from them? Maybe even heat our own homes the Amish way, <laughs> you know? Mm, like, what's the secret? Exactly. <laughs> Let's find out. All right. I'm intrigued. So first of all, right off the bat, the video makes it super clear yeah. that the Amish aren't just doing this out of necessity. Mm -hmm. It's like a choice that's like deeply rooted in their values. It's interesting, you know, because when you think about it, they're not just off grid. Right. They're off grid by design. Totally. Like they're making a statement about. Yeah. Like, how they want to live. Exactly. Like for them, relying on things like gas or electric heating, it just goes against like their core beliefs. Right. Like being dependent on those systems just doesn't fit with their whole yeah. self-reliance community vibe. Exactly. They value independence and community and being dependent on those outside systems just doesn't mesh with that. So basically no fancy furnaces or smart thermostats for these folks. Yeah. Instead, they've got like two main heating heroes. Okay. Good old fashioned wood stoves, which you're probably familiar with. Yeah. And then these things called masonry heaters. Masonry heaters. Yeah. Which let me tell you, sounds straight out of like a medieval castle. Huh. Interesting. And how do those work? Well, we'll get to those. But first, let's unpack those wood stoves. The video points out that they've been like a staple in Amish homes for generations. Makes sense. And not just for warmth, but as like a central gathering point for families. Oh, wow. You can just imagine the stories those stoves could tell. It really highlights that sense of tradition and shared experience in their culture. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like the wood stove isn't just a heating appliance. Right. It's like a symbol of home and hearth. Exactly. It's the heart of the home. And on a practical level, a well-maintained wood stove can, like, heat an entire house. Wow. No power lines, no gas bills, just good old-fashioned firepower. It speaks to that self-sufficiency that they're so known for. Right. They're not at the mercy of, like, fluctuating energy prices or power outages. Exactly. But it's not all, like, crackling fires and cozy evenings. The video shows Amish families spending their summers chopping and stacking wood. Oh, wow. Like, it's going out of style. Talk about a year-round commitment. That's incredible. It really underscores their work ethic and forward thinking. They understand the value of preparation and planning for the long haul. For sure. And it's not just about, like, swinging an axe. Right. There's a real art to it. Mm. Like, the video talks about managing airflow dampers, yeah. getting the perfect burn, you know? Yeah. It's knowledge that's passed down through generations. It's like a master class in fire management. Totally. And speaking of mastery... The video also mentions how the Amish favor certain types of stoves, like those classic cast iron ones. Oh, yeah. Those are beautiful. Right. But I bet those things weigh a ton. Well, that weight is part of what makes them so efficient. Really? Yeah. Cast iron is what's called a thermal mass, meaning it absorbs heat and radiates it slowly over time. So it's like a giant heat-holding hug for your whole house. Exactly. Okay. I'm starting to see the appeal. But what about these mysterious masonry heaters? Yeah. They sound like something out of a fairy tale. They really are fascinating. The video explains that a masonry heater is like a super powered version of that cast iron stove. Okay. It uses a thermal mass, typically brick or stone, to store like a massive amount of heat from a single fire. So instead of like constant heat like a wood stove, it's more like one big blast of heat that gets released slowly over time. Exactly. Think of it like a giant radiator that you charge up with one intense fire. Wow. And the heat can literally last for a whole day or even longer. Oh, wow. That's perfect for those long, cold winters. I bet it feels amazing to just bask in that slow, steady warmth. It's incredible. And because they burn so hot, there's hardly any smoke. It's a super clean way to burn wood. So it's efficient, sustainable, and pretty much the ultimate set-it-and-forget-it heating system. Pretty much. There's got to be a catch, right? 
They must cost a fortune to build. Well, they are a significant investment up front. But remember, these things are built to last. We're talking decades, maybe even generations of reliable, efficient heat with minimal upkeep. So it's like the Amish version of buy it for life. Exactly. It's yeah. about investing in quality and durability rather than opting for cheap disposable solutions. All right. You've convinced me masonry heaters are officially on my wish list. Good choice. But even if I win the lottery tomorrow, I'm guessing a masonry heater isn't exactly a weekend DIY project. That's true. It's a specialized skill, and the construction is pretty intricate. But there's more to the Amish approach to heating than just the systems themselves. It's about how their homes are designed to work with the heat. Wait, are you telling me their houses are like giant passive heating systems? Think of it this way, those thick stone or brick walls we talked about. Yeah. They're not just for show, they act like natural insulation. So it's like having a giant thermal battery built right into your walls. Exactly. They absorb heat during the day and release it slowly at night, regulating the temperature naturally. It's a passive form of heating and cooling. That's incredible. It makes our modern homes with their flimsy walls and synthetic insulation look pretty inefficient. It is a stark contrast. The Amish have a deep understanding of how to work with nature, not against it. And they take it even further, right? The video mentions that Amish homes often have fewer windows and doors. Of course, to minimize heat loss. Ah, uh, smart. And their homes often have lower ceilings, which helps keep the heat closer to where people are living. So it's not just about building a fire. It's about designing a home that like works in harmony with the heat. Right. It's like a whole philosophy of warmth. It really is. Yeah. And it all ties back to their values of simplicity, sustainability, and self-sufficiency. Okay, so we've covered the wood stoves, the amazing masonry heaters, and the super efficient house design. Yeah. But even with all that, I imagine there are times when you just need a little extra warmth. Right. Especially on those like bone chilling winter nights. Yep. What do they do then? Well, that's where those kerosene and oil lanterns come into play. Right. I was wondering when those would make an appearance. Yeah. But I thought those were more for lighting. They are primarily. Right. But as the video points out, they also provide a surprising amount of supplemental heat. No way. Yeah. It's like a two-for-one deal, light and warmth from a single source. Brilliant. Yeah. And I bet those flickering flames just add to the ambiance, right? So it's not just about function. Oh, definitely. It's about creating like a cozy and inviting atmosphere. Exactly. And it speaks to their resourcefulness. They make the most of everything they have, finding multiple uses for even the simplest tools. All right. So we've got these main heating systems. Yeah. The clever house design and the bonus warmth from the lanterns. Yeah. What about the cost? I mean, those kerosene and oil lanterns can't be free to run. That's a great question. And it's a point the video makes explicitly. You've got the recurring cost of electricity with our modern lighting and heating. Right. Versus the cost of kerosene and oil, which in many cases can be sourced and managed much more independently. Okay, so there's that self-sufficiency element there as well. They're not relying on big energy companies or the power grid for their light or warmth. Right. They have a level of control and independence that many of us might envy, especially with energy prices constantly fluctuating. For sure. And I bet those lanterns aren't just a quick fix. Yeah. They look pretty sturdy and well-built. That's another aspect of their approach. They choose durable, well-made items that are designed to last rather than cheap, disposable ones that end up in a landfill after a few uses. It's a powerful lesson in sustainability. It really makes you think about our own consumption habits, doesn't it? Yeah. Always buying the latest gadget or appliance without considering its lifespan or environmental impact. It's a challenge to our modern mindset. Yeah. The Amish remind us that sometimes the simplest solutions are the most elegant and sustainable. And you know what? I think we've covered a lot of ground here in part one of our deep dives. We've explored the why and the how of Amish heating from those mighty wood stoves and magical masonry heaters to the strategic use of lanterns and the brilliant design of their homes. It's clear they've mastered the art of staying warm without relying on the systems most of us take for granted. And what's even more remarkable is that they've managed to do it all while staying true to their values of simplicity, self-reliance, and community. But before we get too carried away with romanticizing the Amish lifestyle, let's take a break and come back in part two to explore how we can actually adapt some of these practices to our own modern lives. Right. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to it. Welcome back. So before the break, we were admiring those clever kerosene and oil lanterns. Yeah, those are really something. Right, like the video highlights how the Amish, they view those recurring electricity costs that we all face. 
you know, mm. and they compare it to the cost of kerosene and oil, which, you know, in many cases can be sourced and managed much more independently. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, it's like they're playing a different financial game altogether. It's a powerful example of self-reliance. Yeah. You know, imagine not being tied to the power grid right. for light or warmth. Talk about freedom. And it's not like they're constantly refilling those lanterns. Mm. The video emphasizes how, like, a little fuel goes a long way. Oh, yeah. And plus, those things are built to last. Minimal need for repairs. It's like the Amish version of buy it for life, but, like, applying to energy. It's a stark contrast to our modern culture of, like, disposable goods. Right. The Amish remind us that investing in well-made, durable items is not only economical, but also sustainable. Okay, so... Full disclosure, I'm not ready to trade in my electric lights for a kerosene lantern just yet. But I know some listeners might be thinking, this is all fascinating, but I'm not about to ditch my furnace for a wood stove. And that's perfectly understandable. But the beauty of this deep dive is that it's not about replicating the Amish lifestyle wholesale. You know, it's about mm -hmm. gleaning inspiration and finding practical takeaways that we can adapt to our own modern lives. So what are some like baby steps we could take? Are there like elements of the Amish approach that we could realistically incorporate into our homes? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's start with those wood stoves. The video actually talks about how there's a growing resurgence of interest in wood and pellet stoves. Really? Yeah. Even outside of Amish communities? Yep. People are increasingly drawn to the idea of sustainable heating, using locally sourced fuel, and gaining a sense of self-sufficiency. Plus, let's be honest, there's just something undeniably cozy about a crackling fire on a cold winter's night. Okay, I'll admit the romance of a wood stove is definitely appealing. But I also remember trying to keep a fire going in an old fireplace. Yeah. And it was a constant battle. I felt like I was feeding a hungry beast. Now, that's a common experience with traditional fireplaces. But modern wood stoves are a different story. The video even points out that they've become incredibly efficient with features like airtight seals and precise airflow control. So no more like fiddling with dampers and constantly adding logs. Not at all. These stoves are designed to burn slowly and efficiently, maximizing the heat output while minimizing the amount of wood you need. And what about those pellet stoves you mentioned earlier? Those seem to be gaining popularity too. They are, and for good reason, pellet stoves are like the set it and forget it version of wood stove. They burn compressed wood pellets, which are incredibly efficient and produce very little ash. So less mess, more convenience, but you still get that warm, cozy feeling of a wood fire. Exactly. They're a great option for people who want the ambiance and sustainability of a wood stove without the constant tending. Okay, I'm sold on wood and pellet stoves, but I'm still a little obsessed with those masonry heaters. Are those really only practical for like off-grid cabins, or could someone actually incorporate one into a modern home? Great question. And the answer is yes. Masonry heaters are becoming increasingly popular in eco-conscious homes. They're definitely a bigger investment up front, but the long-term benefits are hard to ignore. Like what? Remind me again why these things are so special. Well, first of all, they're incredibly efficient. Remember that thermal mass concept we talked about? A masonry heater can store a massive amount of heat from a single fire and release it slowly over a long period of time. Yeah. We're talking hours even, days of gentle, radiant warmth. So it's like having a natural furnace that runs on wood uh, and takes up way less space. Precisely. And because they burn so cleanly, they produce very little smoke or emissions. Okay. That all sounds amazing. But I imagine the cost of building one of these is not exactly pocket change. True. It is a significant investment. But consider this. A well-built masonry heater can last for generations. Mm. Imagine a heating system that could be passed down as a family heirloom. Okay, now you're talking heirloom, sustainability, and ultimate coziness. Mm. I'm adding masonry heater fund to my budget spreadsheet as we speak. Good idea. But let's say a masonry heater isn't in the cards right now. What are some smaller, more affordable steps we can take to be a little more Amish in our approach to heating? You're thinking like a true deep diver. And the video actually offers some great advice on this front. Remember how we talked about those thick stone walls acting as natural insulation in Amish homes? Right. It's like having a built-in temperature regulator. Exactly. And while most of us don't have the luxury of stone walls, we can still borrow that principle of insulation. Okay. But I'm picturing rolls of fiberglass insulation in hazmat suits. Not exactly my idea of a fun weekend project. It doesn't have to be that complicated. The video suggests simple things like ceiling drafts, adding thick curtains, and using weather stripping. These are all things that most of us can do ourselves without needing any special skills or tools. And I bet they make a noticeable difference. It's amazing how much heat can escape through those tiny cracks and gaps. It really is. 
And don't underestimate the power of natural materials. Think wool rugs, heavy drapes, even those graft stopper snakes at the bottom of doors. They add warmth and style without relying on constant heating. It's like taking a cue from grandma's house, yeah. right? All those cozy layers and little tricks to keep the heat in. It's like the original form of smart home technology. Exactly. And it all ties back to that Amish principle of thinking ahead, being prepared and working with nature rather than against it. So it's not about becoming Amish. Right. It's about taking inspiration from their mindful approach and finding ways to adapt it to our own homes and lives. That's the beauty of this deep dive. It's about sparking those aha moments and empowering you to make informed choices about how you heat your home and ultimately how you live. All right, before we get all philosophical and existential, let's wrap up part two of our deep dive. Okay. We've explored some practical takeaways from the Amish approach, from the modern appeal of wood and pellet stoves to the power of good old fashioned insulation. And we even dare to dream about those magnificent masonry heaters. Now in part three, we'll delve into the bigger picture. What can we learn from the Amish mindset and how can we apply their values of self-sufficiency and sustainability to create a warmer, more resilient future for ourselves and our communities? Stay tuned. All right, so welcome back to the final part of our deep dive. You know, I gotta say this whole exploration of Amish heating, it's really been about more than just staying warm. It really has. It's like it's been like a peek into a whole different way of life, you yeah. know? One that really challenges like our modern assumptions about what it means to live comfortably. And sustainably. And sustainably, exactly. We've been yeah. talking about, you know, wood stoves and lanterns and all this clever insulation tricks. Yeah. But what really sticks with me is like the why behind it all. Oh. The Amish aren't just like surviving winter. They're thriving in it. And they're doing it while staying true to their values. It really makes you question, right? Yeah. Like, do we always need the most high-tech, energy-intensive solutions? Right. Or can we find inspiration in simpler, more sustainable approaches like the Amish have? Exactly. And, you know, it's not about, like, everyone going full-on Amish, you know, trading in their smartphones for a horse and buggy. Right. It's more about, like, taking a step back and asking ourselves, like, what aspects of this approach really resonate with me? Right. Maybe it's investing in better insulation or adding a wood stove for, like, supplemental yeah. heat. Yeah. Or maybe it's just being more mindful of our energy usage in general. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Even small changes can make a big difference. Totally. Both for our wallets and for the planet. Yeah. What struck you most about the Amish way of doing things? Honestly, it's that sense of community and shared knowledge that really shines through. Yeah. You know, the video showed how skills like managing a wood stove. Or even building a masonry heater. They're passed down through generations. It's more than just warmth. Right. It's about connection and tradition. That's such a crucial point. They understand that sustainability isn't just about technology. It's about community resilience. Yeah. You know, people helping each other, being less reliant on outside systems. You know, it makes you think, how can we foster that same sense of, like, interdependence in our own lives? Right. Maybe it's as simple as, like, sharing tips with neighbors on how to weatherize our homes. Mm -hmm. Or, like, supporting local businesses that offer sustainable heating solutions. Yeah. It's about shifting our mindset from individual consumers hmm. to active participants in creating a more resilient future. Totally. And the Amish demonstrate that it's possible, even in a world that often feels driven by like consumption and convenience. So here's the takeaway I'm walking away with. Mm -hmm. If the Amish can stay warm and thrive without relying on modern technology, what could we achieve with a little ingenuity mm -hmm. and a willingness to rethink our relationship with energy? It's a powerful question it is. and one that I hope our listeners will continue to explore. Absolutely. And perhaps the next time you feel a draft, you yeah. know, or you reach for the thermostat, yeah. you'll remember this conversation and consider the possibilities. Maybe you'll even try one of those simple insulation hacks we talked about. Right. Every little bit helps. A huge thank you to Frugal Solutions for creating that thought-provoking video that sparked this whole deep dive. Yes, thank you, Frugal Solutions. And to you, our amazing listeners. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Yeah, thanks for listening, everyone. We hope you leave feeling inspired and empowered to make thoughtful choices about how you heat your home and your life. Until next time, stay warm, stay curious, and keep those fires burning bright.